Hello people of the internet, it's Needle here and welcome back to Drang Lake. Last time out we made our way, or we attempted to make our way, into the Magellan Pit to make it to the Grave of Saints. I say attempted because, as usual, gravity planted its foot firmly in my ass. However, we made it, we took on the Rat Vanguard, defeated them, we were offered a little place in their coven, I guess if you want to call it that, and we turned it down because we are Sun Bros for life. Just checking my inventory here, I'm just trying to remember if I did something the last time. Hmm, I must have done. I was just wondering if I'd maybe commented on the fact that the place is actually called the Royal Rats, which kind of hints they had something to do with Vendrick, perhaps, in Drang Lake Castle. Maybe we'll find out more about that in a different episode, but today, you'll be pleased to know, this is our last preparation episode. Or at least I hope that it is. Uh, we've got one more optional area that we haven't completed yet. I have made sure to disconnect from the internet in order to make sure we don't get invaded again, much like the last time, because it is another Royal Rat area. It's in the doors of Pharos, and while the area isn't too difficult, the boss is infinitely more annoying. Just checking there, that is our death, so that's not the worldwide death, of course. Um, when you play offline and you click on that statue, it'll tell you how many times you've died. 22 at this point in the game is actually pretty good for me, I'm quite happy with that. So, uh, 5,000 souls we have here, we should maybe try and put that to use. We don't have any chunks or anything, that's going to be another thing we need to do. I might just do that off camera, or include it as a little sort of add-on in the next episode, just showing you how I got them. You can get them in the Doors of Pharos, probably just farming, that's the best way to do it. Um, I'm just going to buy a big stock of life gems here. Thanks. And I'm also going to check our rings, I think everything that we don't use I just put in the bonfire, but let me just check anyway. Okay, Ash Knuckle Ring increases petrification resistance, that's what I was looking for, because this boss we're going to be fighting very soon. Just checking here, we should probably go human. Is, uh, it doesn't use petrification, but it has a couple of little guys who hang around it that do, and that petrification meter flies up in this game. You don't even know that it hit you, and you'll be done. It's very frustrating, and the boss itself is actually a bit of a, bit of a pain in the way that it attacks, but it's also really familiar if you played the first game. If you've already fought this boss, then you probably already know what I'm talking about, but we'll get into it anyway. Here we go, heading off to the doors of Pharos. So we were here the last time and we went that way to sort of continue our journey on through the game. This time we're going to head this way into the rat area, characterised by the giant rat's mouth as you can tell. So we're now back in another royal rat area and this one's going to be frustrating. As you can see here comes the first guy already. Yeah, so those guys, don't get hit by them. It's just not going to be good. You can see there we've been invaded by an NPC. We'll deal with that hopefully in the next little minute or so. Okay, so Mastodon's down and that's a good thing. He's also dropped as an item, ow. As you can see, the guy loves the Evelyn. Rusted Mastodon Helm. It's very, uh, I wouldn't say important, but it's a notable, something notable that it's called the Rusted Mastodon Helm. And we'll check out why as we take down Bowman Guthrie here and his army of Avalons. Yeah, okay. He's just rolling the hell away from us. No! No! And he's basically still at the same HP he was a second ago. And there he goes, he's not too difficult. You see he's wearing the Royal outfit, I think that is, and he's carrying dual Evelyns. Royal Swordsman Leggings is what he drops, so yeah, he's wearing the Royal Swordsman outfit. Now, as always, like in the Royal Rat areas, you need to use a lot of Farish lock, lock stones to unlock these doors. You can see here, which looks like a giant door. Surrounded by two Pharos Loxons, one on each side. As far as I'm aware, you can use both of those. This is actually just an item, but it's a very good item. I'll wait, here's one here as well. Maybe you need three, or just this one, I'm not too sure. But behind there is another Mastodon enemy, I'm sure, unless it's been changed in the update. And I'm just making sure what way we came in. I don't remember that door being there. And um, behind there is an item, which I'm struggling to remember the name of right now. But basically it's an item which you need to break to make full use of, and whenever you break it, it turns into a very good twin blade item. It used to be the most overpowered thing in the game, but they nerfed the hell out of it, and thank god for that, because everyone used it online. Germax and a torch. Not too sure if that was always there. As you can see, we've got all Germ dude up there, we're going to be interacting with them very, very soon. Is that a petrified Germ? Do we maybe need... Um... Uh, I don't think I even have any. Oh, I do have... have <laughs> Branches of yore for days, so we're going to be okay with that one. 
The water slows you down, as always. It is very frustrating, and unlike Dark Souls 1, there is no rusted iron ring to help speed up your traversing through these kind of substances. Amber Herb. We don't really need to make any use of those, but it's good to have them anyway. Maybe sail on the Gavlan, he pays good money for them. As you come through here, you're going to be assaulted by even more of these dudes. And of course, just try your best not to get hit by them, because just one bite, I think, can do maybe half of your petrification here. Maybe it depends on what kind of gear you're wearing, but I want to make sure, because just two hits will take you right out, and then the boss, that holds true just the same. Now, I believe there's a ladder somewhere I've just missed. A ladder. Ah! Ladder! There we go. So now begins the Garum portion of this area. Twisted Barricade and Soul of a Proud Knight. So it seems like these guys are all making their way to us. This is different, of course. It wasn't like that. In the original version. Garum are not too difficult once they drop their shields. Not tons of HP. I'm just wondering if this guy's actually going to go do what I think he's going to do. Hmm. In the original version of the game, I never ever got this chest because he always destroyed it before I could ever get a chance to open it. I was just wondering if they'd maybe programmed him so that he would deliberately go and destroy that chest. See, so we can sneak up on this dude. No, okay, we're not gonna. Oh. Absolute zero stagger from that dude. He was just not interested. <laughs> that was quite funny, but. Oh, yep. Okay, so don't touch these. These are spike walls, as you can tell, and just touching them will cause you damage. However, it does also hurt the enemy, I believe. I think you can make the Garm guy kind of walk into those. Okay, so I managed to get the chest. I'm going to hit it once. <laughs> Just to make sure it's not a mimic. And we've changed it over to catch anyone out who played the original. Okay, it is a crossbow trap. And inside we get a Titanite chunk and a petrified dragon bone. That is huge for us because... We needed that Titanite chunk, we still need to get another two to kind of get on to the final level of our Claymore and then from there we have the Titanite slab to finish it off. Oh, there's still a large soul of an endless soldier. At this point, I'd like to take a little break. Oh, got a couple of germs through there, some seem to be petrified or just standing still. And, uh, what did we pick up again? We picked up Twisted Barricade. I'd like to have a look at that. A hex that distorts local space. For a brief moment, spells are deflected. Hexer Galea never took an apprentice, making it unclear how his spells were passed down. It is even possible that Hexes came from another source entirely. Now, it's very possible that Hexer Galea was either present at Ulysseal in the first game, or he just heard of it, or he understood it, and that's how he got hold of the Hexes and passed them down. However, it's just as likely, of course, that Hexer Galea had absolutely nothing to do with Hexes, and the study of Hexes came from Ulysseal in the first place. He also picked up good as Garmax. At first glance, this axe appears crude, but with further examination, one sees the fine craftsmanship of Garm blacksmiths. Quite heavy for a human, but flung about with reckless abandon by the Garm. It's quite good. I think the Great Axe is a lot better, and it is actually quite an enjoyable uh, weapon to use. I've used it before. I quite enjoy it. Rusted Mastodon Helm, that's what we're looking for. Helm wore by the primal knights of Dring Lake Castle. Durability is low due to rusting. His weight would normally crush a man, but to the brutish primal knights, it may as well be made of papyrus. Papyrus bean paper, of course, but it says the primal knights of Drang Lake, Drang Lake Castle. Now, primal, of course, has its own meanings. You remember the primordial serpents from Dark Souls 1 and the like, so there's a very old knights, and they serve Drang Lake Castle, so if they serve the castle, what are they doing all the way out here? Many questions to be answered. The rusted, of course, can you actually... Yeah, these are the statues. Um... Oh, we got an axe thrower over there, we don't want to annoy that guy. But, um... I didn't know he was going to go for a third, I should have guessed. Everyone in this game has a, a three-hit combo. But, yeah, I kind of lost my train of thought with that one. Primal Knights in Dring Lake Castle. But yeah, it's rusted, so the, that armour alone is ancient 
So we have to under wonder did the knights come with that armor and that's why it's ancient or were they given that armor and it's now become ancient over the years? We have some answers to those kind of questions. Peeve in this game, guys who seem to be blocking yet attacking at the same time. No idea how that works. So here she seems to be. A, here seems to be another locked door. I'm not too sure if we have to open this one. I can't really see the way out. Like I thought I could. It seems to be there. This seems to be the boss. Hmm. Go have another wee look around the area. Ah, okay. So we have another door right in here. With the bonfire, right before the boss. I wonder, why would they do that? Of course the rat one had, the one in the Grave of Saints had this as well, but that's obviously because you need access to the Covenant. Same here, once we beat this boss, the rat guy will be on the other side. Maybe he'll have some new dialogue for us. Right, what to do here? This boss can spit acid, which ruins your gear. He has a charge attack that is the most infuriating attack alive. Before that, he has a bunch of minions which will rush you and hit you with petrification at once. So, the large big swings of this claymore here, if I can get any of that won't wreck it. That should hopefully take them out. I don't think you need to lock on, but I'm going to try it first of all. It may take a few attempts, I won't lie. Because this boss can be over in just a matter of seconds if you just get unlucky. So you see here we've got all these guys. You see the boss is actually up there on that hill. Sleeping away. Okay, and there you go. Boss straight out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, see when he puts his head down like that, that's when he's going to do that ridiculous charge attack, which just feels kind of undodgeable. Yep. <laughs> um, you may think he looks very similar and acts very similar to an old boss. You would probably be right. An old friend of... Uh, a very particular knights. And also, he's meant to be a rat. <laughs> I can't really see too many rat similarities here, but it's not really a fine place to see. Ugh. Thank god we're blocking there. 100% block shield for life. I wanna go. As the former mentioned boss, if you fought him before, you'll have no problem here. I can't hit him because I'm very bad at aiming, but you wanna just aim at his legs? like so, and you'll take him out in no time at all. Once he gets down to about half HP or less is when he'll start spitting acid at you. Well, come on. Maybe just unlock from him? That's probably going to be a better idea. We've got the old legal ring on which is giving us that extra poke damage that you get on the counter hits. Yeah, you see, he's starting to... And there he goes down, so I think we were just a little bit overpowered for this fight, to be fair. We had a lot of HP and pretty heavy gear and stuff, but there you go, it can be pretty easy. It's just these guys, you saw yourself, I think maybe only two of them hit me and it nearly fell my entire petrification meter in one attack. Not petrification, sorry, it's toxic. Petrification is part of it, but mostly toxic there. And if, if, uh, sorry, if the toxic lands then more than likely you're going to be dead before you know what's hit you, unfortunately. I'm not too sure if there's a cure for Toxic in this game. Because this is cures poison. So does that. I'm not too sure if anything cures Toxic. Probably the Divine Blessing is your best bet there. Definitely. Just having a look around. Yeah. So just don't get hit by these guys, use a big weapon, you can draw all of them out together and swing away at them all at once. You see I killed three out of the four with one attack. That's kind of what you're aiming to do. There is a way... So the bonfire is here? Isn't it? No? Yes, bonfire is here. So... This is the way forward. Yeah. No problem. So the next... Oh. Yes. <laughs> you see, you see, he's in the ruins of a Fada store. Thou 
returnest. I am not unkind. Shouldst thou forbear thy ways, audience shall be thine. Swearest thou to serve me? And of course we're already said we're not going to do that. So if you're done with that and you can back down here, this drops you off basically at the front door. You remember these germ guys down here in the Mastodon night, the bonfire, the first bonfire is effectively right underneath her feet and that's pretty, you probably hear tinkling away there. There you go, uh, not a difficult boss fight itself, it's just the little ads there who can hit you with such a serious status effect before the battle even gets kind of underway and it just wrecks you before you even get a chance to respond to be honest. So back to Majula now, we still have about 10 minutes left so not too sure what I'm going to use those 10 minutes for. I was thinking maybe we could try and grab another two Titanite chunks. How much is the upgrade itself going to cost us? It shouldn't be too much because, and I mean in context, because we're going to be farming some Garm guys anyway and they're going to be dropping souls for us as well. So we're going to need 2k, which is absolutely nothing. We need two more chunks. So we can actually use the souls we have on us right now for levels. At least I hope so. Or, first and foremost, we should see if. We can get a level upgrade. We cannot. We don't have any fire seeds. She sells fire seeds for 8k. I think she only got one or two. So we can order. For 60 quest. Yes, thank you. So we don't have any shards. I've not had any shards for about 10 episodes now. I don't know why I keep trying. How many levels are we going to get? Just the one. But it leaves us with enough for that <laughs> upgrade, which is nice. Ah, yes, we don't even have the slot yet, do we? No problem, we're going to keep going until we get our tunement slots. No problem. So I'll do a run, I'll show you my farming run of Doors of Pharos if you're looking for items. Show you how I do things. And if we don't get what we're looking for after that, I'll probably just cut it out and move straight to when we actually get the materials that we need. We only need two chunks, which isn't the worst very possible to get them, I think, from here, unless they change the drops. Yeah, that was never going to end well. Very lucky there, that guy totally just swiped right over our heads. These guys, not so difficult to uh, get behind. Goodbye. Come on, drop us a chunk. We drop something. Oh, Grim Warrior Helm. Helm. Struggling with my words again today. Right, tiptoe, tiptoe up behind this dude. I don't think we can kill these guys or anything. I've tried it so many times. I had something like 50 strength. This up Claymore totally upgraded, and even then, it just doesn't let you backstab these guys and kill them in one shot. Grim Armor, so that's very nice as well. We actually have. Gold serpent ring? We do not. We could use could have used that to increase our chances of getting a drop. That's not gonna happen, unfortunately. Yep, so we'll pop this. We'll speak to Gavlan very quickly. Sell him some stuff. Not gonna need this. I'm gonna keep the card troop here. Or this. Might use that. Don't need a notch weapon. Why keep the dragon tooth? Because it's fun to have around. We need a short bow. I'm just showing you this mostly to show you how much things are worth, to be honest. Most Garm descendants refuse contact with outsiders in love with a sense of deep contempt for those who exiled them. So there's some kind of background there to show that Garm were exiled and it would seem that it was possibly by humans. The stocky Garm are kind natured but humans deemed them impure and drove them underground. There you go, <laughs> there is word for word confirmation. Humans exiled them and they never trusted them since. Scavlan seems to be the exception and thank god for that because he sells some very good stuff. If you're looking for some quick souls, things like uh, Mana restoring items, as you can see here, 400 for a wilted dusk herb, twilight herbs, things like divine blessings and that, I never use them, so you can sell them and you get 600 souls there, so that can get you over the line for anything you might need. Quite interesting. Soul vessels go for 1200, but you might want to hold on to them to make sure you can respec your character. My favourite are spaces, I never use spaces, I find the system kind of strange, I don't like using it, and they go for 1300 souls apiece, so you can see there, I can get seven sold and that would just get me whatever I need. So it's good if you don't have any souls in the bank to use. No problem Gavlan, we forgot to check the soul on the boss we just defeated so I'm going to check that. 
those who choose to serve the Rat King must have the courage to face his challenges. That told us absolutely nothing. The challenges, of course, being the two bosses that we've already defeated. And quite handily too. So, continuing my run, I usually run from... Run from the beginning of the Doors of Faris, all the way up to the beginning of Brightstone Cove, and then I used the bonfire at Brightstone Cove to fast travel back. <laughs> I've always well, got a shield stuck in my sword. I thought I'd get behind him there, but no such luck. No item drop there. Crystal Lizard. Let's see, I don't know. Am I equipped with a bow? I am not. Let's try the bow. We only have three of those. I have 27 fire arrows. Ah, no chance. Oh well. It was worth a shot. One day I'll get that guy. He's the only crystal I think I've never had. Oh, backstab. He'll survive just. Let me finish him off when he gets up. If you're offline, of course, it may be probably beneficial to go the other way through the rat area and kill all the garm in there. Because there's a lot more of them. But, um, if you're playing online, then you're just going to be invaded all the time. It's not really going to be a good use of your time, to be fair. I'm going to drag this guy away from the edge. I have killed him before and he has given me a drop. And he fell off the edge. Don't make that mistake. So no drop here. And then if you want, you can just continue all the way up here to Brightstone Cove. Eventually. And then use the bonfire there to travel back to the beginning. And do the whole run again. Like I say, I'm not really a fan of the rat side, but I can do that too. I'm just wondering if it's worth our time. We're coming up for 25 minutes, so I think I will just leave it there. And at the beginning of the next episode, I'll probably just show you me collecting the last two chunks and upgrading the claymore to full. And then we begin our ascent finally to the castle. It's been a long time coming, but we're finally going to go and meet the king. Or at least attempt to. The woman's not here, she's over there. We have nothing to show for it right now. We can ignore her. So we're going to head over here to the pit where I like to do my thing. I want to thank you guys for joining me here again today. If you liked what you saw, could you maybe drop me a like, share it among your friends, or even subscribe to my channel? It all appreciate it all helps so much, and I appreciate all of your support. Today was fun. We finished our final boss. Next time we're going to begin our ascent to Dragon Lake Castle and put an end to this whole curse. But until next time, guys, I'm Needle in the North, and keep praising. <laughs>